Hi everyone, uh, it's Sarithkin. Welcome to Leveling Up um, with Duke Tiernan. He's going to talk to us about um, Kit Profile, and I'm excited to Hi hear everyone, him talk. Uh, oh. It's Sarithkin. Oh. Welcome to Leveling Up um, with. There we go. And <laughs> oops, um, <laughs> because he's really, really good at it. Um, <laughs> And he has put together several kits of different time periods, um, all looking very, very cool. So thank you, Your Grace, for agreeing to do this with me. And uh, I'm going to let you take it from here. All right. I hope you ask me questions, because I would do better with questions. Sure. <laughs> OK. All right. So. Um, this is kind of like talking to my kind of like talking to my students during the beginning of COVID when you didn't really get feedback because of delay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, sure, we've all, everybody joined the SCA, and we all just wanted to probably be um, whatever you thought was the coolest thing on coming on TV or Hollywood or whatever. I mean, when I when I first joined, Braveheart was huge. I'm not Braveheart, Highlander. I'm a little bit older than Braveheart. Highlander was huge. So, um, of course, my friend and I, we wanted to be Scottish. We were both in a small little college branch, you know, freshman in college or so, and we wanted to be um, Scottish. And then we priced wool and decided we didn't want to be Scottish because we were poor college students. <laughs> and there was no real good armor either, of course. Armor in the SCA was just whatever we could get. You know, I mean, really, it's, when we started, there was no, very few people had a kit that was anything besides what they could put together, which is perfectly fine. I think that's okay as long as people get in and start. So I, I'm going to share my screen. Great. See if it works. Yeah, I think I totally came in when Braveheart. So I know that. lots of us are inspired by. Yeah, well, remember Avalok and everybody with the blue face paint right after Braveheart? I mean, 100%. I was surprised we didn't have more Greeks after Troy came out. I don't know. Can you see my screen yet? I It's still loading for me, but it should be up in a minute. Okay. There it is. So when I joined in the very late 80s, like 80, 89, it was, you know, whatever you could get your kit together to fight in was what you did. But we were definitely inspired by things like Conan <laughs> and Highlander. And I, I, I see no problem with that whatsoever. However, I think a lot of us also use those as our documentation for our kits, which is a little bit different. <laughs> so I'm not so sure that's such a great idea. So um, I know that a lot of people want to have an awesome kit right off the bat. And honestly, nowadays, it is totally possible to do that. If you have a little bit of money, you can totally get an awesome kit in the SCA because it's there's so much more available than there used to be. But... If you started off like I did, that's my very first SCA event where I'm in armor. And I made the front page of the living section of the Spokesman Review in Spokane. I don't know if you can tell which one I am. I'm the one right in front. And if you look closely, you'll see that my body armor is actually my ski vest from water skiing. I covered it up with a tabard. But of course, you can't see that from the side. <laughs> so that is my very, very first kit. <laughs> yeah, you're, I you're believe photos... that's Duke's fan, two guys behind me, the brown tunic, by the way. That's hilarious. <laughs> so your photos are in a little bit of a delay, but I can see it all now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, there's no problem with getting whatever you can get together to get out on the field as soon as possible. I'm 100% for that. So I don't want to come off as an armor snob. I've had lots and lots of kits that were, they were what I could use to get on the field. And I think that's great. But there's also, once you've been in for a while, I think that you have the, I mean, if you're really into this stuff, you probably want to level up your kit a little bit. 
So my kit has been constantly evolving based on what I was interested in at the time, what I could afford, and what my skills were. I never did become a good metal worker. So I, anything metal, I purchased from somebody else. And of course, if you have lots of money, anybody can level up their kit with just throwing money at it. But it's also dangerous if you don't know what you're looking for. You can throw a lot of money away on wasted stuff. I bought some expensive pieces of garbage when I first started, not knowing that they weren't going to work for me just because I thought they looked cool. So that's something you have to be careful of. I don't know if you can see this. This is a pretty blurry picture, but this is my first kit that I made completely myself, except for the helmet. And what I'm wearing there is a leather jacket from the Goodwill with plastic plates riveted into it. And my kidney protection are the demi greaves off of the leg armor that I had purchased for my previous stuff. That, by the way, is my squire brother, Duke Steercar, on the other side, and his kit looked pretty nice. He has a Torgal helmet on there. Has he always had a And you see if I have a black great helm. Oh, I can't see it yet. Um, his kit always looked nice. It's not, it's not necessarily, it's, he's got a very ornate shield that I think he painted up himself. I'm sure Rolf made the shield for him. That picture's huh, not coming I wonder why you can't see it. There it is. Okay, is it, is it, well, we'll try the next one then. So oh, no, is, wait a second, man. This is a round shield and a heater fighting together. So, yeah, I, I'm the heater shield with okay. a black great helm, leather articulated arms I made myself with no idea what they were supposed to be like. The body armor is made out of a jacket from the Goodwill, a leather coat with a plastic plate riveted on the front and back. And the kidney armor are the demi grease. You see, if you see the gentleman in the back, the shorter gentleman in the brown, I bought the legs from him. So they're from somebody about eight inches shorter than me. The, the leg armor only goes halfway up my thighs, which I covered up with black pants. And then, of course, I have my really awesome uh, Minnetonka um, moccasins on that I dyed black and rabbit fur to the top to make them look more medieval. But, but <laughs> so that was my better. upgraded kit. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, look how much better this kit looks than the, the life jacket. Well, and, you know, I can move really well in this. So it's, I mean, I think getting armor that fits your body the right way is probably the most important thing. I mean, there's lots of people that have some really nice, if you go to full plate, like when I first started, there were people with full plate, but there were very few people with full plate that actually fit them right so they could move well. So we all thought that full plate was terrible armor because you couldn't move in it. Well, it was because they, they had just, you know, they made the armor themselves and didn't know how to fit it properly. They didn't have years of experience. All right. So here's the upgrade of that kit. <laughs> it has a tabard over it. That is again, Star, see me, with uh, Torgal helmet and the awesome Torgal um, horse hair. I probably have to wait five seconds for that to show up too. Oh no, it's right there. That one worked. Good. Looks like you're totally gacking steer car there. So I have some, those gauntlets I'm wearing were the most expensive thing I had ever bought. <laughs> oh, it's about to take my head off. Oh. So you can see that helmet. I was so proud of that helmet. <laughs> and, and my knight Dagar made so much fun of me for wearing that. <laughs> Very cool. So I don't really quite have a medieval aesthetic going yet, but I'm getting there. Now here, I'll wait a second. Uh, I can see the, fic the photo. Here is when I, I at least had an idea of what my what an armor should look like. I wanted to, I wanted to look like a knight. So I have a black great helm, a black coat of plates. I think. Oh, a gambeson made out of purple, 
purple cloth with garden, uh, not garden hose, with um, pipe insulation cut into quarters, duct tape and shoved inside there because Miranda and I didn't know what we were doing. She called it the gambeson of tears. It was the gambeson of almost getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> so that is my attempt at a 12th century night or maybe 13th century night. I'm fighting Sir Elligrim there before he was a Sir Elligrim. You can tell because he has the Mr. Yuck face on his shield. Was that before the Mr. Yuck face got... But here, I, I, at least I was going for something medieval. I'd seen... Onto, onto the sun? Yeah. Yeah. This was the first iteration of the Mr. Yuck face. <laughs> so I have a nice curved heater shield. Have a coat of plates. But of course, it's not a very well fitted coat of plates. And in fact, that coat of plates I made out of corduroy. And I think it lasted that one event. Because corduroy does not hold up very well. <laughs> Maybe corduroy backed with canvas would have been a good choice. So that same kit only made in black leather is coming up now. This is my definite upgrade. I can see it. And on the right is basically the same thing I was going for, only in my brand new kit. <laughs> it's gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. I, 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 had, I did nothing except for throw money to Eastern European armorers. <laughs> did, did, are those cased greaves, too? Those are completely cased greaves. They're, they're beautiful. And it's 100% titanium. <laughs> wow. Which means it also is cracked. So be leery of, of um, buying from the Eastern Europe. If you do, go for spring steel. <laughs> but some things to look at. If you know, I don't know, you can't see my arms are kind of in the way. But the, the armor is sort of wa wasp wasted. It comes in and it's at at my actual, you know, where my body pivots waist, not down where I wear my jeans waist. Okay. So lots of times when we put on, when we make medieval stuff or what we think is medieval stuff, and you'll notice a lot of SCA people, it will go all, the body armor will go all the way down to their, to their hip line. Cause that's where guys think their waists are. Cause that's where we wear our pants. But of course, medieval armor doesn't go that far because if it does, you can't move. And I don't know if you can see in the plat and the leather, go to plates on the left that you can see this one big piece of plastic riveted in there and it goes all the way down to my belt buckle and that my belts are actually sitting on what what I, my modern pant waist which means that the armor doesn't move nearly as well as it would if I wasted it up a little higher that's a really good tip um, especially for women <laughs> our waists are even higher than men um, so you're going to want to cut your breastplate even shorter than you think yeah, probably right at the bottom of your ribs, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and I think guys, if a lot of go to like the transition armor, I think a lot of that stuff, like um, I can't think what it's called right now. It'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, a lot of those actually are cut really, really high by our standards. And it's because that way you can move. Imagine sitting in a saddle and you wanted to lean out of one of those tall saddles that come up above your belly button in the front and the back. You need to be able to bend <laughs> higher than that. So I would show pictures of other people that aren't me, but I don't want to be making fun of anybody. Because <laughs> it'd be really easy to show, oh, this is an SCA version of a Viking, and it doesn't really look like a Viking, does it? So I decided that I would sh try to show you pictures of my bad kits instead of other people's bad kits. Now, obviously, some of my friends are going to be in there, too. Like, it's my friend... Um, Phelan, this is not Phelan. This is Patrick. I was going to say that was Uncle Pat. Pat. <laughs> Uncle Pat. And he's got you know, one of those SCA round tops that were super common on the East Coast. You don't see him very, didn't see him very much in on tier, but if you travel to the East Coast and look at pictures from Penzik, there's an awful lot of those. They're spun domes. Yeah. Which do not give a very medieval profile for a helmet at all. I mean, no, no, no medieval helmet is perfectly round because no helmet, no head is perfectly round. 
So those make for some interesting padding problems. <laughs> he does have great vision, though. Yes. All right. Here's the same kit with the helmet on. And of course, that's Duke's fan with his bassinet, his super low profile, tight fitting bassinet that he used for so many years. I thought that might be him, but it didn't look like his uh, silhouette. <laughs> yeah, that's back when we were both young squires. Now look, his, his leather body armor, it's cut pretty high so that he can bend. Yeah. Now, to the modern eye, that does look pretty weird, I think, but it actually makes a lot more sense. And again, on the right, you can see the same, the same style of armor that I was going for, you know, 20 years ago, only carried out a little bit better. But, but this, the black on, on the left, that, that was the leather coat that you riveted the No, that, that, no, that was, so I made the leather coat. And then I decided I want to look more medieval. So I made the same armor you're looking at, only I made it in black corduroy. Oh, okay. So it was expensive and then it tore. <laughs> so then I saved up my money and bought a hide of a side of black um, upholstery leather and made it out of that. By the way, I had to sell that armor one year to pay my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so even so, if you, you know. Can't. I was going to say, even if you can't afford to buy from the Eastern European guys, and actually they're pretty, um, pretty reasonable for what you're getting. Oh, um, if, you yeah, for if you want to, if you want a brigandine from Eastern Europe, you can get it for a really good deal. And and you, if you look at, the, they show you pictures and how they make them. If you want to make your own, a brigandine would be an easy thing for somebody to make because it could be lined with plates you know tinned steel plates like they used or you can make it out of pieces of plastic or hard leather or aluminum and nobody would know the difference you can't tell what the, what's on the inside 100%. but you want to not make it into a straight tube like i did i mean my black one there is a straight tube you can see it's all wrinkled up and it's definitely not fitted to me So that what? Oh, now wait a second here. No, I, your pictures are coming up fine now. I don't know what oh, was okay. happening in the beginning, but they're right on point now. All right. So now what we're looking at is I wanted to go back to my early Celtic roots. I had no idea what my armor was supposed to look like, but I know that big battle belts were popular in Ontario in, in the 90s. So that's what I made. And to make it Irish, I have Triskeles all over my wool tunic. And I've carved um, scenes of Kukulin into the leather there. I think and you can see some the, pretty. I was just going to say, I think this is the Tiernan I first met. <laughs> this, is, this is a pretty standard um, Ontarian look of armor in this picture, I think. Except for um, the Lands Connect was pretty much a standout kind of thing. I think he was the only one around doing it in Ontario at the time. So if you wanted to go for some, like the hidden armor look, you can see that several of us here have hidden armor on. Um, and to bling it up, I don't know how medieval it is. It's not. I have um, some etched brass on the back of my hands there. Um, I got my wife to embroider all over that tunic and the tooled leather. And, and you can tell what you're going for. And of course, the plaid pants, they let you know right away. It's a Celt, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> Oops, the phone's ringing. So. Is that, is that neither, you? Can you see me? No, yeah. neither of these are SBA okay. people at all. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't know you had a kit like that. I, I wish I did. <laughs> So I want, I just want to show that the, look at the waists 
and the shapes of the armor pieces there. That, that's very different than most SCA people go for. So these are a couple of um, guys that just do historical reenactment. If, you, if you're into this kind of stuff, you might, the guy on the left is Ian Laspina. He has the Knight Errant webpage and makes great videos on all of this stuff and the medieval aesthetic. So if you really want to get into this stuff, I suggest checking out his page. And I've got it on the, one of these slides too. Cool. So this is, uh, uh, the one on the left, he's 14th century. And the one on the right is 15th century. So for people who can't tell the difference right away, one is you look at the Hound School Bassinet. That's going to be 14th century. And then another really good quick giveaway is the shape of the elbow cooters. So the elbow cops, you notice the guy on the right, his are much larger and they flare in and cover the inside of the elbow. That's a 15th century thing. And the other one is basically... When I first joined, that that arm, just the the rear brace, the van brace, and the elbow cop, those were pretty much standard SCA Ontarian arms were based just off of those. Because I think that they were probably, Steiner was probably going for that 13th century English knight look, and a lot of people had that exact shape. Even if they were Vikings, because <laughs> that's what you could get. <laughs> so some things to look for. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and we tend to emulate the people that um, are fighting really well. Yeah, exactly. We don't look, most of us do not look at medieval. I mean, looking at somebody like this would be the a big step forward for lots of us to look at an actual reenactor. But most of us look at movies we like and fighters that we want to be like, SCA fighters, and we copy them. I mean, I had the big giant Torgal... Um, horse hair off of my helmet for years and years. I couldn't afford a Torgal helmet, but I was going as much as I could. So something to look at here, notice he's got his belt, is wearing worn way down low on his hips, but his actual, the waist of his armor is quite a bit higher than that. No, the, the guy, male, go ahead. Let's just say the guy on the right is more of a jousting thing, right? Like, isn't the top more jousting? Well, not. he's he's set up for foot combat. Okay. But he's he's also he's got an armor that's set up to be transitioned back and forth between foot okay. combat and jousting. I mean, you can see he's he's set up here for foot combat, but he's also got his um his lance rest or his arete on his yeah. right side there, which he should take off if he's going to actually be fighting with that pole axe because that's going to foul up his arms. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. He's he's he's. He's kind of got some jousting equipment on and some foot combat stuff. So if you look at his tassets, see how his tassets hang straight down? Yes. Onto his legs? That's for foot combat. If he was going to be riding his horse, they would be angled out away from his legs so that when he actually sat in the saddle, then they'd be hanging straight down his legs. Okay, cool. So that's another thing you can look. I mean, little things like that back to what we had back in the day and kind of what we should have been looking like on the right. <laughs> Notice that all three of us are wearing the big Ontarian um, demi breastplates. Mine's actually a battle belt, but and those are the Ontarian demi breastplates that were super common and very popular because they, they allow lots of upper body mobility. And I mean, we don't really have to worry about getting stabbed in the chest. If you do get stabbed in the chest with a pike, you're going to get a bruise, but it's not going to damage you. So we don't armor that very well. And of course, we all have the stainless steel pauldrons because everybody needed pauldrons to look good and blingy. So I quit wearing the pauldrons and then I regret it because I've gotten lots of bruises. You should always wear pauldrons of some sort, even if you go hide them under your, your tunic. I was going to say, every time I take mine off, I end up fighting someone like Devin and regretting it. Um, but so if somebody wanted to go for the profile on the right, um, how uh -huh. would you do that with hidden? I mean, you would have to have some hidden armor, right? Yes, yes. So the, the thing for that is you definitely have to have hidden armor, but we don't all pick good hidden armor. I mean, I mean, 
I've seen lots of people where you have the Brett, you can see their lacrosse shoulders or their football pads underneath their tunics and stuff. You need to find the right low profile stuff and it can be purchased. I mean, you can purchase things like that. Like a lot of people will buy motocross kits or kind of the, the consumer version of um, SWAT team outfits or motocross stuff and wear under, and a lot of that works, but you can also just make it yourself out of plastic and leather and, foam pretty easily the hard part is the arms when you want to have a good elbow protection it's pretty hard to wear it under a tight fitting tunic so most people on the SCM, you, in front here everybody wears some baggy pants it covers up your leg armor they might have you know titanium full plate legs on underneath that they might have plastic and they might have nothing on except for a knee cop so you can hide a lot under your clothes, but when you get to your upper body armor, it's a lot harder to make the, the profile look good. It helps a lot if you're super skinny, because then you can bulk up more armor and nobody notices. So that's an unfortunate thing. <laughs> but yeah, like the guy on the right with the long white tunic, I think that would be an awesome look, actually. It but was. it would be, you could pull it off with some aluminum arms and a low profile elbows, I think. And for body armor, all you really need to do is wear some kind of um thing over your kidneys like you could go out and buy you know like quarterback kidney protector or rib protectors mm -hmm. and that'll do it but then you kind of bulk up your look again so yeah it's got to be careful to make sure that it, it it follows the profile you want and you know, take a lot of pictures and don't be afraid to cut things up <laughs> another attempt at a similar idea trying to be more medieval i added chainmail skirt <laughs> That's when my knee started to go bad. I wouldn't suggest wearing a chainmail skirt without chainmail on the rest of your body, also. <laughs> Do you have legs underneath the chainmail skirt, or was the chainmail skirt? Yes, I have. I have plastic legs on. And do you have like lacrosse body armor on underneath that? I have on what you see. <laughs> okay. So Steercar and Dagar are both wearing plastic. The you know, the Ontario Charina covered in tooled leather. So they look nice. They're just not very medieval. Right. But of course, neither is what I'm wearing. <laughs> Even though at the time I was thinking, oh, it's so medieval. <laughs> it's all relative. Yeah. Well, it had, it had people from the, the Middle Ages carved onto it. So therefore it must be medieval, right? <laughs> Why not? So here's my big upgrade. I got actual chain mail. <laughs> Still wearing the giant leather belt. Different giant leather. I think this is my third giant leather belt. I don't know why I'm wearing scale shoulders. Because they're cool. Yeah. But so, um, of course, my, my chain mail was made for me by Sir Rolf, and so was the helmet. So I didn't have anything to do with those. But um, Rolf was doing what I think was started by Torgel was everybody wore that wore chain mail, wore chain mail tank tops, basically, with no sleeves to free up their arms and take a little bit of weight off. I don't know that anybody in the Middle Ages actually wore chain mail tank tops. But we certainly did in Ontario for a really long time. So I blinged it up with the tooled leather belt made by Dagar this time, not by me, and those scaled sleeves, which I was super proud of those scaled sleeves. Oh, and by this time for my body armor, I think I have some sleeping pad over my chest and shoulders underneath that. And on the left is the same basic kit without the chain mail on. I think it's what the one we saw from the picture before, but I'm fighting Duke James and he has a really nice transitional kit with body armor that fits nicely. <laughs> sabatons, the whole I, deal. Yeah, I was going to say, he looks like he has sabatons on. Yeah, he's got case greaves. And of course, he has the skill. He made all that himself, so it's pretty nice. You can see my squire at the time and hiding in the background there. That's Duke Carton there. Oh. And he actually has a really nice kit at the time because it was a wool tunic and all of his armor was hidden under his tunic and his pants, and it actually looked really nice. 
a better profile than most Viking guys use, I think. Did he come in that way or did you sort of um, help push him in the right direction? Well, he came in super eager and wearing pretty much plastic plate, you know, the same kind of same kind of thing. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Where am I going? The same kind of thing that, that Dagar and um, Sirkar are wearing there are probably what Matt's wear, or Kjartan's wearing under his tunic. Because that kind of armor is awesome for this. It goes under, makes great hidden armor. I've, I went Lands Connect for a little while, and I wore that underneath my big blousey shirt to hide my, you know, for body protection. So that's great armor. Works great for the SE. It's super cheap. It's made out of four pieces of plastic barrel. And you can make any look you want. Same same kit again. Is that a I don't know that if Cedric? Yeah, that was that's Cedric when he was a squire. This was at the beat my son tourney oh. <laughs> that Rolf was throwing. <laughs> His son was finally old enough to fight. Oh, I guess I should have one of those now. My son that fights is 16. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so the horse tail, I know that was a really Ontarian thing. Is there any um, evidence for that? Sure, but not, not the way we're wearing it. Right. Horse tail, crescent, horse hair that comes straight off the top of the helmet, like feathers, or like the Roman and Greek crest, that's, that's what they did. I don't know why Torgal went for this look, but it sure looked good on Torgal, so we all copied it. Who doesn't want to look like Torgal? That's right. I mean, I joined the SCA. My one of my very first things I ever saw was Torgal in his chainmail, in his chainmail vest, basically, and he just looked so cool. <laughs> That's who I wanted to be. So that chainmail I was wearing is made out of butted aluminum, so it needed to get repaired. So while I was getting it repaired, I made this other kit out of sleeping pad <laughs> my body armor in these two pictures is entirely sleeping pad covered with super thin upholstery leather and it felt so good and it weighed so little that i wore it for years and years as my main armor and the funny thing is i got lots of comp people on me that oh you look like what i think people really look like from the middle age just like you know my body armor is a sleeping pad right <laughs> there's literally nothing rigid in it <sighs> I have those scale sleeves on. And splint greaves. If you want to do anything in Ontier to bling up your kit a little bit, put on some greaves. Any kind of greaves. 100%. I, I have fake greaves and it makes my kit look I know, and your better. fake greaves look awesome. I want a pair. So here I'm wearing, my, my greaves have like, I think five copper splint or five brass splints on them. And look, I'm even wearing period shoes back then. Well, period shoes. I made them myself. Are those, are they shoe covers or are they real shoes? No, those were actual shoes. Those were, act, well, maybe. Because you I don't know. Feet, right? Sometimes I wore, sometimes I, I made medieval shoes, my, my Irish ghillie kind of shoes. But I also sometimes made them with holes cut out in the bottom and wore my cleats inside. So can't really tell from that picture, which it is. But an actual oak slatted shield which is pretty heavy. But you can see, I mean, look at Rurik over here with his knot work on his tunic. That looks pretty on his gambus, and that really blinks his stuff up nicely. Yeah. And a painted shield goes a long ways, a really long ways to making somebody's appearance on the field look better. It's having a design on their, their shield. Even if it's not your heraldry device, if it's just your heraldic device, excuse me, if it's just a simple, you know, cross pattern or two colors painted on there or something, it goes a long ways to improving the look of somebody's kit. Some silly rules we had back in the day, poor work over here has duct tape on his pants to mark his knees. That really doesn't help anybody's medieval aesthetic, I don't think. But you know, Marshall's insisted. Of, yeah, I was going to say, and how many of us are looking at the knee when we throw down there, you know? Yeah, I just eventually, so I, you can see here, I started tying, well, I copied this from Skepti, I think, started it, tying um, pieces of um, trim. 
I think that's actually card woven trim that Miranda, not card woven, um, ankle, ankle loom trim that's tied around right above my knees to mark my knee line. And then eventually, I think a lot of us just started ignoring the marshals when they told us we had to mark our knees and decided we didn't until it became okay to not mark your knees. Right. Well, someone changed the rules. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm going to get hit in the knee or I'm not going to get hit in the knee. I don't think it matters that much <laughs> whether you see it or not. I, I agree hundred percent. Like nobody's looking at your, if you're looking at your target, um, your opponent knows where to block. So. Yeah. So here, this, I mean, this is a fairly super, super simple SCA kit. I've literally got plastic leg armor on made out of a barrel. The body armor is a sleeping pad that's cut to fit. And then it's blinged up with the brass scales on it. And then of course the nice artwork on the helmet. Which right. is totally not medieval, but it sure is cool. Yeah. All and right. the brass splints, in, 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 the brass scales and the brass splints, anybody can make those. Well, that doesn't take gonna, a lot of metalworking was, skills. Yeah, anything. I was going to ask you: Are those the brass scales that are the fishing lures? Is that later? No, no. These are ones that I actually cut out out of heavy brass. But easy, easy to upgrade your kit with. So this is what we should be looking at, right? Instead of looking at people that we admire and want to be like, we should look at actual stuff from the Middle Ages and try and copy that. <laughs> so this is an actual, you know, stone carving of an actual knight in the Middle Ages. And look at all the cool stuff. He's got scales on his sleeve. He's got dags on his shoulder cop that most people would think were Roman. It looks like he even has turges hanging down there, yeah. like Roman stuff. Only this guy is from the, you know, right here. It says 1300 to 1325. And Not this is press. probably, this is a time when most people are wearing skate or chain mail only. And so he's got a knee cop and, and shin. So those are probably leather leather shin balls and a leather knee cop over the top out of boiled leather. And I mean, that, that would be an awesome kit to make <laughs> and totally doable for SCA. But the only, we should be looking at that kind of stuff. And here's my, my kit that I've used the longest. And this one is blinged up. It's just, it's leather body armor again. It's blinged up with Torgal um, cloak clasps as the shoulder pieces. I was kind of going for the Sutton Who look. And it's got um, cast pieces from Torfin as my buckles on the side here. Oops. Um, and of course, I've got my awesome blinged out helmet that is still very simple. Just the water jetted face really blinks it up a whole bunch. And Pike has his awesome scale and lamellar that he bought from Torfin when Torfin retired. But this is a super simple kit that I think looks pretty good. Did, did you um, shape the leather breastplate yourself? Yes, I did. But I shaped it by borrowing my friend's steel leather, steel breastplate, getting my leather wet, and then pounding it into his steel one with... Um, a hammer to like a shaping metal. And that gave that really just put the lines in. So then I took um, croquet balls and I rubbed those into the muscle from the backside to shape it. And then I, I basically shaped it just like it was with a hammer. And I think I even took a chisel to it. So I've rounded off chisel to deepen the lines. And then to totally cheat and accent it, I very carefully dyed around the muscles there a darker, <laughs> darker brown and then I lightened it up as I got farther away <laughs> so if you had an airbrushing skill you could also cheat a little bit yeah you could totally like take some of the skills from the cosplayers that make armor and you know just... oh totally totally all the cosplay and stuff you just if you just transfer it from making it out of foam well you could even make a lot of SCA armor out of foam it would work just fine but um into leather a lot of the tool the skills are going to be the same and the same shape but shaping ideas Ethelred said he thought you uh, shaped it on your own chest. That's what I tell my students when I show it at school. I say, yeah, I just pounded into my body to get that look. Uh -huh. And then I have a leather sub armalist there made out of a um, deer hide. So 
the leather stuff I all made myself, and that doesn't take any great skill. Even the arms I made. I mean, those are just following patterns. Well, actually, I had to make the patterns for both the subarmless and this part. But anybody can do this. It's not expensive. You just have to be willing to kind of ruin some leather. So that part can be expensive overall, I guess. So here's my kids' kits when they were small. So cool. And really pretty inexpensive. Those helmets were literally $25 each off of Amazon. Because they're just cheap Indian knockoff helmets. And I, they, the face openings were too big, so I riveted some expanded steel onto them. And then they've got some upholstery leather for body armor there and some plastic lamellar. So with the upholstery leather, you don't have to do anything on the edges, right? Like, or do you? Not really. I know I, I did nothing to the edges on that armor or most of my leather armor, actually. On the one, on the first kit I showed, I rolled it over and sewed it down to hold the, the foam in. But most of the time, I don't, I don't do anything to treat it at all. Cool. No special skiving or anything. Just cut it out and call it good. And did you buy the plates? Yeah, those are plastic plates from um, I think PlasticLamellar.com. Cool. Because originally I was going to make them both lamellar suits. And I did when they were really small. They had lamellar shirts. And I thought, well, I'll just keep adding on to that. And for some reason, they just, they wanted to be Greek. So they have their little Greek kits. And I made myself a Greek kit, too, that I never wear. I wore it once at Pensick, and that was it. <laughs> so this is basically, I mean, here's, this is a recreation somebody was going for, but based off of a museum piece. So, I mean, I don't have it exactly, obviously, but it's pretty good for SCA for little kids. I mean, you can totally do this, and this looks pretty darn fancy. And it really, I think it was really one weekend worth of work. Yeah, I was going to say it would be good even if they weren't kids. Like, the profile is right. You know, like, it looks right. Yeah, I think a lot of people, if you just look at what you're what you're trying to make, that the real look at the real ones, you can come up with a lot of, you know, you can do it. It doesn't take a lot of money or a lot of skill. Both of those kits were, you know, there's probably total $100 there for two sets of armor for little kids. Super cool. So on the right, these are not SDA people. <laughs> this, these are, I think this, this might be the Thanes of Mercia or might be Wolf Headness. I don't remember which one. I think. But they're a reenactment group that just does like demos and stuff at museums. So this is what we're supposed to be looking like. And this is what we look like. <laughs> <clears throat> so you can see that we definitely have somewhere to go, some improvement still. Now, if you look here, I'm on the on the left side picture here. That's the same kit I've been wearing for a long time, but I've got those low profile aluminum arms we were talking about. I can wear those underneath the tunic or over the tunic because look how small that elbow cop is. It's just big enough to cover the points and it's super lightweight and it's super tight fitting. So I can actually get a pro. I could wear those with just about any kind of profile I want to look like. So if I wanted to look like one of these guys, I could do that. And you can see this simple body armor looks really good with the Torgo pieces on it, right? <laughs> so instead of using off-the-rack Tandy buckles, you get period cast pieces, and you're going to make your kit look way better just right off that little tiny things like that. I think I have a picture somewhere. Just let me show you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Just those little those pieces right there. Now that was pretty spendy, but those go a long ways towards bringing up your kit. A lot, There's a lot of what people like about what I've done in the past was really the fact that I, I spent a little money. They're what? spendy, but they last forever. Oh, oh yeah, those those cloak class right there are probably twenty to twenty, probably twenty years old and been on my armor for most of that time and get used, you know, probably at least once a week for 10 or 15 years. 
So, yeah. And when you make use pieces that are actual cast bronze, they last a long time. They aren't going to break like the nickel or the stuff you get from Tandy. I don't know how many pictures of me you want to see. <laughs> oh, here's my, the scale armor you were talking about. I guess I should have got a picture with, I don't have any pictures of me wearing that when I'm actually fighting in it. I don't know why, or I have a one or two, but they're kind of hard to find. But I was kind of going for here is I wanted to be King Arthur. <laughs> so again, this is pretty fancy looking armor that cost me, the body itself, I think cost me $75 worth of fishing lures and a year of my time. Yeah, the, the time <laughs> I, is the big thing, right? Four holes. Yeah, it took a long, long time to make and a lot of cuts in my hands and things like that. But it, it's not expensive. I mean, you could buy that now. You could buy something very much, a lot better than mine, actually, a lot more accurate looking for, you know, $300, $500. But I made it for $75. <laughs> so if you just take the time. So here's a little bit more accurate look in there. Chain mail, still chain mail with no sleeves. So not so super great. I don't know why I have my leather pants on and all tied up tight. I mean, here's my, here's that leather kit that is really a sleeping pad. It's a pretty good picture there. And it's got Torgal clasps on the shoulders, Dagar tooled leather for the body armor there. And of course, the picture looks awesome with these two little kids. Now, if I'd only hidden these knees, it would have been pretty good. So how, how much time are we supposed to have for this? Uh, as long as you are going. I don't know, another half an hour if you want to. Are you still there? I am here. Can you not hear me? Okay. I don't know if I'm actually telling anybody how to bling up anything. Or <laughs> I'm sure not. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So oh, here is a cut and thrust kit. I have no idea. I, I had no, no accuracy for anything here. Just thought it would look cool. <laughs> so those are actually my red Viking pants that I wear. <laughs> And then those are my leather boots that I made for stepping up as Baron. An off the rack shirt from, I think, bought it at Penzik. And then a leather vest I made. And then the leather cover I made for, that actually goes over my um, heavy helmet. But here I'm wearing it over a fencing mask because it fits over both. So I wanted to be Lance Connect for a while. So I made that hat and as a cover for my um, Spangen helm without having to make a new helmet. So you couldn't see my Spangen helm. All you could see was the grill. That that's a good. Which I don't think uh, I have any pictures of. That's a good way to sort of do that, so you don't have to buy yourself a new salle or whatever. Oh, I, I really thought for a long time about getting my friend trying to get all my friends. We all got just basic round top SK helmets and then made leather covers for them. We could turn them into, you know, Japanese helmets one year and or we could turn them into, you know, English Civil War hats another time. Oh, that's that same the new kid again. Just showing off. I don't know why there's two of the same picture. So here's my Anglo Saxon stuff. I don't have any of that with armor. I fought in it before, but I don't have any of that. Again, that's pretty easy to do. And that's a profile a lot of Ontarians actually do fight in, is the the coat off of the the plates, off of the Sutton Hoo helmet and stuff. Yeah, Ethelred has a kit like that. So here's a totally different look I was going for. And you can there's definitely problems with it. So that, that was my attempt at Crusader kit. You can can't really tell very well, but I have male chosses on in the picture on the left. So those are chain mail covering my feet and my all the way up my thighs. 
chain mail on underneath. Um, but that, that gives us, you know, the, it's terrible. They, they are hard to walk in. They're hard to move in because you're trying to deal with the SCA. If I was just making mail, that would be one thing. But trying to make mail that fits over your knee cops or your elbow cops, that is just, that, that's just not, not doable, really, I don't think. <laughs> I mean, you have to go later. You, so there's a time period you really can't do authentically. You can't really be a Viking, you know, because you're going to have to have a grill, right? And you can't really do um, Norman to about 1200s without some hidden armor. You definitely have to hide your armor. After that, you can wear period armor and be perfectly fine for doing SCA stuff. But you know, hidden armor makes it a little harder. So I'll show you what's wrong with those in a second here when I look at this other. Let me go to this guy right here. Oops. See the guy on the, the right? Look at how his mail chosses fit. Your pictures are running. And how his bit. arms fit. That's because. Oh, okay. I'll wait a second. Yeah. So anyway, what I'm showing on this one when it pops up is the guy on the right with the chain over his head, he's paid a whole bunch of money to have armor fitted specifically just to his body. And notice that it fits his tight on his ankles. It's it's not saggy and loose so that all of a sudden male isn't just a dead weight on him. He can probably move great in that armor. It's fitted to him. He doesn't have excess cloth. Look at the ones on the left. If you were to go order yourself a male shirt, it would probably, and you want a full hauberk, you probably have sleeves, something kind of like those two, <clears throat> which we would all think was awesome. But on the other hand, you can't move very well in that. And they couldn't move very well in that either. In the Middle Ages, they got it tapered and fitted to their bodies. So that's a big thing to look for. So let's... Oh show you how some, some people improve their kits here so here is an evolution of one guy's kit that sent me pictures in when i asked you can see on the left as you can you see the picture yet i'll until that pops up no i think i'm looking at a penzik picture you have you and godrick and a whole bunch of spears oh wow yeah i flipped through the pictures really fast trying to get to something so it probably tried to load each one that probably was a mistake <laughs> okay yeah whoa, whoa, okay there's a tell me when you can see three pictures this guy in blue the guy in blue and purple no okay so right now i'm seeing the arm harnesses that you were just talking about a little bit well ago. it's three three pictures of one night it's all just Oh, okay. With the chain mail on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I went too fast. It's all right. I, sometimes the pictures are keeping up with you, and it's just sometimes they aren't. So. <clears throat> Can you see the guy with the, the sea lion in the shield yet? Yes, I think. No, I'm looking at the off-the-rack mail versus the fitted mail. All right. Oh, oh yeah, that, that's that's what I was talking about a while ago. <laughs> We're almost there. Now I'm looking at the... Zoom's like, fun. Yeah. Now I'm looking at the that like uh, extant. There we go. Off the no, that's back to the off the rack mail. Is that the one like with the guy with the mail? <laughs> okay, yes, we're there. The blue. <clears throat> Where the guys were really tight to his head. All right, so Sir, I think it's Sir Steve. I've used his SCA, his mundane name all the time. He's a knight from Kaid that lives nearby, but I, I know his mundane name. I think he's Sir Stephen. 
He's probably Steven. in here right now. But yeah, um, on the left, you can see his early SCA kit, which was awesome at the time, right? Yes, yes. Look at that. Look at that. He's actually got, you know, a chainmail bishop's mantle on. And I mean, that's awesome. And then the same basic kit evolves probably in the 80s there, right? Maybe early 90s in the middle to a more accurate version of the same kit. By the way, you know, back in the day, everybody thought those SCA grills that they wear on their bassinets were totally an SCA thing. But you know what? They actually are a medieval thing. They're called wolf rib helmets. And they're becoming very common in the steel fighting groups because you can see better. Right. And they actually had that. <laughs> very cool. They're real things. So, and then on the right, you can see his evolution. Talk about blinging up your kit or leveling up. I mean, that's the same basic kit and period that he's going for the entire time, right? And you can definitely see how he leveled up a little bit at a time. And I just want to point out as a shield painter, look how much the shield in the right picture levels up his kit just because they put in the extra effort to make it a little bit more blingy than the first shield. Yeah, totally. And notice that his body armor, he, he's wearing armor there. You just can't see it. I don't know what he's wearing for body armor, but I'm pretty sure he's got something on under there. Definitely. You know what? And at this time period in the Middle Ages, often you can't tell what their body armor is either. It's hidden under a surcoat or a jupon. So um, Ethelred wants to know if you made your own male sabatons or did you buy them? No, no. I bought a pre, the, yeah, the off the rack male. And then I just made, I made the, I made the foot part for them. And then I had to figure out how to attach them to it and i don't know how, how it how it was supposed to be done but i made it work but i didn't like the way that they fit i don't like the way they feel because they're so loose around my ankle there's probably there's probably two or three extra pounds of mail on the lower leg that i don't need if if i fitted them to me i i like that you brought up steven's picture because his look on the right which is fabulous is really um attainable Yes, totally. And I mean, I don't know what he's wearing, but you could totally, this could be plastic or it could be actual period splints. Those, the knees would be, you know, like you could probably get those knees for like 30 or $40 if you got them off the right guy. You have hidden arm armor underneath there or actual late period, nice 15th century arm armor, either way. His body armor could be plastic if he wanted. It could be a steel breastplate. It could be whatever he wanted, and you can totally get this look. And his helmet is your, basically, it's a nice version, but it's a standard SCA bassinet. It's to, oops, totally doable. I did not mean to click. I accidentally clicked over to Sun John's kit. So we'll wait and see if that pops up. Uh, that We're there. Okay. So on the left is Sun John's kit, which, except for the helmet, and I do, I mean, on the left, you look at how he took a really basic SCA helmet and he tried to make it look more like what he was going for, which was early Chinese by putting the lamellar around it. It looks really good. And I think that's, a, I mean, having a different shield shape from everybody else. I mean, you definitely look at him and don't think he's a Viking, right? Yeah. I, I often get people confusing my stuff for Viking. I'm like, I, I don't really see how you see that, but okay. But you're not going to, you're not going to mistake him for a Viking and even his first kit. Right. And then on the right is his newest version of his kit, which all blinged out tooled and painted leather based off of actual Chinese icons and stuff. And if you look carefully, you know, that's totally a doable, because that's basically the same thing as those what Dagar was wearing in those earlier pictures from back in the 90s, right? It's four pieces of tooled leather, but you could cover it in plastic. Or, you know, it could be leather-covered plastic if you wanted. He's probably got plastic legs hidden under his pants there. His helmet is different. It's actually kind of a square profile to it, like they were actually wearing at the time. So that part's a little different from your standard SCA helmet. 
he had to get it specially made for him. And then he's got the cool, I, know, I guess, I don't know if you call it a tunic or not, but his, his tunic with Chinese on it and it covers up his arm armor. Totally blinged up. And probably pretty inexpensive armor right there. Yeah. So here's another thing to look out for if you're actually going for medieval instead of, you know, dark ages or um, ancient or like, like, or ancient, like half of us in Ontario do. So here's some actual medieval really quick changes here. And I can see the 13th century arm harness, by the way, if I had a 12th century one, it would look exactly the same. <laughs> so it's a it's a male shirt for basically 200 years if you were a knight you were wearing a male shirt the lengths change and stuff but and then you get the early 14th century it's the same thing only you get an elbow cop on the outside and a knee cop you go to the late 14th century and you've got you're getting towards full plate going on here but you can see that you can see there's definitely difference between the arm harnesses and the hand protections. The guy in the early 14th century, he probably would have mail over his hand too. So you have any questions about those? I don't. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. So I think, that, but that's something we don't often look at. Like mean, we just get whatever we get. Like I, my armor, that the red stuff that I have now, I really wanted it to be late 14th century, but I wasn't really picky. I, I bought what the guy was willing to make. And my arms are really more 15th century. They're not as big as the ones on the, the one I have pictured here, but they do come over. They're quite a bit bigger fan on them. And they actually come in and protect the inside of the elbow a little bit more than I wanted. But, I'm going to pretend it's 14th century because I'm in the SCA. If I wear mail on my sleeves, on my shoulders, instead of the big giant pauldrons and stuff, because uh, my helmet is a little, my helmet, I could stretch to about 1370 as the latest, but probably all the way down to 1320. So, you know, we kind of fudge things a little bit. But if you're actually paying attention, you can tell the difference. So even like an SCA, we see lots of people that are doing 12th to 13th century, but very rarely do they actually have, you know, either no elbows that we can see or just a little tiny cop like that. So here we're back to the one that I tried to go to earlier, when you can see the fitted male versus, you know, yeah. buying it off of India mail. And even though the guy on the right, his, his, his profile is kind of odd looking with that. He actually has a steel cap on top of his head underneath that, which is something they did. But the cool thing is that he has that all totally fitted to his body. And he will have no problem lifting his legs up and doing stuff with his male chosses like that. Look at his, his gauntlets are amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we saw the two guys on the left, we would be thinking those were super awesome kits. But at the same time, there's definitely problems with those sleeves. Yes. They would, you would get so tired so fast. <laughs> Again, we should be looking at when we're looking for stuff for our ideas, instead of looking at other people we think are cool, we should be looking at medieval manuscripts. And then you learn all kinds of cool stuff because this is from the 14th century here. And look, they're still they're wearing scale skirts. If you look at the guy on the right, he's got on turges just like your husband's or, or my leather ones. And he's even got a musculata. Yeah. That's either bronze or leather. So technically, based off of this, I could probably get away with wearing my leather musculata and my subarmalis if I added male and then my later period helmet. And it would be this guy in this picture, right? Yeah. 
I mean, it actually looks a lot because he's he's got on the the greaves, and then it looks like red pants. I don't know if it is or not. Yeah, I think he, what he's got on is padded chassis with knees, like leather knees, boiled leather knees, just kind of sitting on the front. And then if you look down underneath on the right, there's a guy that that that's just a that's a chainmail gorget with a mantle attached to it. Which is totally what I have on my current armor. I mean, and if there's look at the, the guy's helmets, you can I mean look at and then look at the profiles of all of their bodies. Yeah. They've all got wasp waist. I don't know if everybody was skinny in the Middle Ages or they wore girdled up gambesons. I think if you have your a fitted gambeson or a doublet that actually pushes you into the shape that you want your armor to be, I think that they fit better and and I think it works. I couldn't find any pictures, but I saw a while ago, a couple months ago, a guy who had his first um, doublet, and then he had one tailored according to what he thought was more medieval, and it totally gave him, and he was a standard SCA build kind of guy, you know, kind of a chunk, and, you know, like a solid block where shoulders and waist are the same size, and with his um, actual medieval style, you know, 15th century um, doublet on it actually gave him that wasp waist and then his armor fit on him so much better than it did before and all of a sudden his armor had that same look to it too so i think it's totally possible we just have to start with the foundation garments and work our way up to get the right profile i i've also picked this picture because that guy has the center grip heater shield <laughs> and since I have a lot more experience with center grip in the last 20 years than I do, do otherwise, I'm switching to a heater shield, but I want a center grip so I don't have to have as much transition. <laughs> so <laughs> you get inspired and you get really cool ideas by looking at actual medieval stuff. And you can wear lots of pink, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I have here are um, some places I think you should look if you're really interested in leveling up your kit. Don't look at SCA people. I mean, sure you do, but don't don't look at them as like your goal. Look at look at these guys. The knight errant guy. That's Ian Laspina. He has great videos. Um, the Thanes of Mercia. Oops, that's supposed to say Mercia. I left out an I there. M-E-R-C-I-A. They do incredible, incredible reenactment of um, Anglo-Saxon stuff and um, Vendel era, so pre-Viking stuff. Same with Swehanaz. And then um, the bottom two are Facebook groups that have lots and lots of stuff if you're into those time periods, lots of research. Lots and lots of pictures you can look at to find out what you want to do. What do you uh, think of the Men at Arms book series? So if I was a historical reenactor instead of an SCA person, I would probably be poo-pooing -poo them a lot, which I hear a lot from, because I go on a lot of their websites and, you know, watch their videos, and they poo-poo those kinds of things. But I think for SCA purposes, they're great. If I was, if I don't tell people when they join the SCA, Find a guy in one of those Osprey books and be that guy. Make your kit match that. Because even if it's not 100% historical accurate, it's way better than doing what most of us do and go, well, this guy gave me this right arm and I got this left arm um, from the loner box. And do all that so you can get fighting, but don't keep fighting in that same kit 10 years later. Right? You want to evolve and level up. And a great way to do it is, is start with the Osprey arms and go, I want to be that guy. How can I make that piece right there and work your way up that way? I think that's a great thing. And even if you have mis mismatched stuff, I mean, something that covers it can hide a lot of um, stuff that doesn't work. Right. And having mismatched stuff to let you fight is way better than right. waiting five years to get the right kit. I'm not saying that you should come out and hold out till you get the perfect kit. No, <laughs> I think you should come out in hockey pieces if you need to and just fight and find out if you like it. And if you like it, then awesome. But then start working on improving it and you don't have to spend lots of money on it. 
but 20 years in, you probably shouldn't still be fighting in 10 issues. And we watched your evolution, right? I mean, that, and that was over like a couple decades. Yeah, yeah. And I fought in some really awful stuff. I mean, I wore that, that, um, that, this life jacket basically more than once. <laughs> so, yeah. Very cool. It's totally possible to get started with whatever you can. And every if anybody wants to do this, I can't imagine not being able to find people that want to help you or a group that has loner armor to get you going. So. All right. Well, I'm looking to see if we have any more questions. Um, Ethelred asked a question, but it was about one of your photos, and I don't know what photo it was. So sorry, Ethelred. <laughs> <laughs> said on the left well ethelred it, it, he's just he's better at leveling up than i am he's got an actual thing he's going for every time yeah, yeah. i was often going for an sca aesthetic <laughs> and you know sca cool is is still better than um wearing pickle barrel with nothing covering it so yes there's wear there's... the pickle barrel but cover it up with something cool well, very cool. Is this your last slide? That was it. All right, cool. I've got nothing else. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it. I think that that gives people a lot to think about. Um, it gives me a lot to think about. I mean, I, I think, you know, if, if we all put up our first kit, um, and I think, you know, that would be kind of cool if we all did that sometime. Um, I think you'd see a lot of uncovered plastic. And so well, I everybody... Think, I think that we should... Yeah, we totally should all do that. We should have a tournament where we all have our awesome kits with pictures of this kit. Like a picture <laughs> taped to the front of your shield of what you look like at your For first everybody time. to see. Yeah. I would totally sponsor that tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. All right. Um, yeah. Somebody saying a barrel in Japanese style is pretty nice. Yeah, because it, it looks right. Um, but yeah. I think I just lost. Yeah. Your... So, so oh, okay. Uh, somebody sent me their Japanese pictures, but I didn't share them because I didn't know the guy. <laughs> but you can totally make Japanese look SCA awesome with with plastic and parachute cord. I mean, reenactors might really be offended by that, but for our purposes, they look great. They really do. They really do. Well, thank you, Your Grace, for doing this for me and for everyone else. Um, I, th I thought it was super educational and I really appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't look like I was going off my kits through the years. Because <laughs> oh. I would really like to show them off a lot of other kits, but I didn't want to. Go, oh, you see, he did a really good job on this, but you see those those things he's wearing right there, those are bad. <laughs> yeah, and I and I think, you know, if you get 80% right, you're still doing way better than um, the majority of the people. So. Yeah. So um, anyway, I, I think if you're showing up on the field, you're doing better than the majority of the other people. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Um, all right. Well, I am taking next week off um, because it's the 4th of July weekend. But the week after, I'm going to have Sir Casimir on. And he's going to teach us all about um, making shields with wood and edging them with rawhide. And he makes the most awesome shields. And they look so much better than metal shields. Um, so that's another way you can level up your kit is uh, getting a nice wooden shield and painting it. So stay tuned for that. Thank you again, Your Grace. I agree. I'm picking up mine from Casimir this week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. See you guys <laughs> later. Bye-bye.